Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Wanted Dead or Alive is an American Western television series that starred Steve McQueen as a bounty hunter named Josh Randall. It aired on CBS for three seasons from 1958 through 1961. McQueen's character is a Confederate veteran and bounty hunter that has a soft heart. He often donates his earnings to the needy and helps his prisoners if they have been wrongly accused. He's not just a bounty hunter that chases and captures men who are on wanted posters. Many times, he settles family feuds, frees unjustly jailed or sentenced men, finds missing husbands, sons, and fathers. This variety of items in the series, as well as its pursuit of justice, not just money, contributed to the show's attraction and popularity. Before the debut episode of this classic western, nobody knew who Steve McQueen was. He was a well-trained actor from New York that came from the famed neighborhood playhouse as well as the actor's studio. And he had his big screen premiere that you'll miss in just the blink of an eye, playing the role of a knife-wielding thug in Paul Newman's Somebody Up There Likes Me from 1956. He did some Broadway production work too, and he got good reviews for his acting skills. Then in 1957, he was in the cult favorite science fiction movie, The Blob. That film wasn't released until after Wanted Dead or Alive, but the producer of this series, Dick Powell, got to view a rough cut of The Blob, and he liked what he saw in McQueen's performance. He ended up offering him a role in the show Trackdown. That was a Western series that starred Robert Culp. They filmed that episode called The Bounty Hunter, and they unleashed Josh Randall, who is as tough as nails and who let no obstacle stand between he and his quarry. With a favorable fan reaction to this, they decided to offer McQueen some more work. Matter of fact, his own series. Wanted Dead or Alive commenced filming its debut episode in July of 1958. From the start, McQueen had a legendary temper on set, and he was known for his stubbornness. At the beginning of the series, he actually fired three stuntmen. I read somewhere that it was on the same day. I kind of find that hard to believe, but I do believe he fired three stuntmen. Now, Dick Powell originally was hesitant to offer McQueen this lead role. He liked what he saw in his acting, but his short stature, as well as his inability to ride a horse, kind of bothered him. But after the first episode was filmed, and he saw the early clips of it, he was sold. And it was his idea to give the character of Josh Randall a gimmick weapon. McQueen's initial salary for the show was $750 per episode. But due to the show's popularity, that climbed to $100,000 per year, which was really pretty high for that time. The time slot changed for the third season, which ultimately ruined the show's ratings, may have been CBS's way of killing the show off due to its increased production cost. Another factor that was probably involved was McQueen's strained relationship with Viceroy Cigarettes, who was the show's sponsor. Initially, the creators of the series had a hard time selling the show because bounty hunters were thought to be kind of unsavory characters. The creators overcame this obstacle by having Josh Randall give most and sometimes all of his earnings to help people that have been affected by the crimes of the people that he's trying to bring in. McQueen grew really tired of the show pretty fast, as he wanted to be on the big screen more than TV. After he got a chance to play in The Magnificent Seven, he found that the only way he could do the film, because it was being shot at the same time as the series, was to fake an accident or illness and get a medical leave from the series. McQueen accomplished this feat 
by faking a car crash, in which he merely crashed the car into a tree, receiving only minor cuts, muscle pulls, and bruises, which got him his medical leave. The series' production went on a temporary hiatus while McQueen was able to film The Magnificent Seven. During the last season, it became real clear to the production that McQueen was going to leave the show. They brought in Wright King to somewhat take his place. His character was introduced as a protege of Josh Randall's, and he would have moved into the lead role once McQueen left. That idea was completely abandoned when it was decided that nobody could duplicate McQueen's success at that role. The series has introduced us to a lot of future stars that were just getting their feet wet when they did episodes on the show. In one episode called The Martin Poster, it features a real scrawny 21-year-old Michael Landon. This was roughly one year before he shot to be a household name status on NBC's juggernaut Bonanza. And it's kind of funny that both he and McQueen shared some common traits that cult science fiction films and TV westerns launched their big careers. For Landon, it was a campy horror film that was a surprise box office hit called I Was a Teenage Werewolf which was released in July of 1957 on a very low budget. Now, what's a cowboy without a good horse? Some days on the set of this series, Steve McQueen had the feeling he didn't want a horse at all. He got fed up with his co-star as he played in this hit show. The horse he used was named Ringo, which had a pretty impressive acting resume. Ringo and McQueen were partners in crime, but according to McQueen, he and that horse had some real troubles in real life. He called him the crazy horse, and everybody on the set knew that this was the case. The horse had a tendency to bite him every chance he got. When he wasn't watching, the horse would lift up his foot and step on McQueen's foot, or he'd stand on his hat if his hat fell off. McQueen actually had a scar on his arm that was thanks to the horse. He said as soon as he would arrive at the studio every day, the horse would be glaring at him, and it was a big joke with the cast and crew. They would put up signs around the filming locations and the sets that would say, Good luck, Steve. Hope you make it. And McQueen said he would never walk behind the horse because the horse would always try to kick him. Ringo and McQueen were doing something right together, though, because Wanted Dead or Alive became one of the most well-known westerns of its time. Go back and take a look at this great show from the late 50s. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.